How you doing, Jimbo? Hello. Rope for a visit. Can't chew that damn gum and make and, and, and do videos. He must be up trying to scare the raccoons. <laughs> what are you up trying to get the raccoons? Oh, he's sleeping. Oh. <laughs> so we just come in or what? Are you coming out? No, I'm oh, you coming out to play. Seeing your garage door, we didn't need to wake you, old buddy. Oh, that's pretty nice. You had enough sleep for the, for this 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 yeah. today? Yeah, it's too nice to stay to sleep. What was it? Was. Was. <laughs> <laughs> it was. He says. Do you have any 57 license plates for the rodeo? No. Oh, you know you got two. Two that match, like yep. your face and your ass. They don't look yep. alike, but they belong together. Cool. The one on the front, and one on the back. <laughs> there you go. He was. Uh, I was picked up a cupboard yesterday, and the guy said, I got a couple plates for Jimbo. He didn't give them to us, but he gave us a pretty good price, and we bought them. They, they are. I thought so, too. We live in the neighborhood down to uh, registered motor vehicles. Not my family's fault. No, that's what we are. She got plates for the car. Sleep, old boy, or what? Yeah. You ain't talking very much. I'll let you go burn your grave. Yep, yeah, nope, yep, yeah, nope. Your nose work. Yes. Awesome. I've yeah. seen that. And they even work on the rim that has the bumps. Perfect. But the reason why that one was dented, I think they, the rims that that went on must have been offset at a little different. But they work. But I straightened out the dents. Well, you're good, good at that, sir. Right so. um, you're good at that. There's a dent there, there, and there. They're still there. Yeah. But um, a lot better. They were crushed straight out. You know what I mean? Like yeah. crushed out, and this ring on. How the, did you fix it? Would you pull that out? Um, no, I uh, C clamps. I put the C clamps in there and bent like I. Oh, okay. Um, uh, this tape right. I put um, this white. It's really, really tough. Yeah. Kind of thin, but really, really super tough um, tape on the chrome first. Gotcha. That way you, like, um, same as when you're hammering. You hammer on this stainless steel and you do more damage with the picks. Of the hammer, I've done that. So uh, than me. the dent itself, it looks worse. Like the dent is just a dent, smooth. But when you start tapping it out, all those little picks from the hammer, um, and they're as thick as the metal. So even if you sand them off, um, which takes forever, because stainless uh, doesn't sand good to polish up like aluminum or yeah. you know. Or you but anyway, I I pulled them out, but they were like. Dent it out here, how that, dent it in this way, so this whole crease out here got folded. So I just put it right on the feet, crease and just went like that and kept working it. And okay. after a while, like, um, it worked out. Yeah. Um, you do whatever you can when it comes to straightening dents in, in now yeah. you're talking my kind of licorice. Yeah. Do but you, you, can. you know, like, but the pliers work good, you know, the C clamps, they yeah. just pried. They tried the high low and the low high, because I was. But um, if I tried to do it with a hammer, I would have made them look like hell. Gotcha. Show me your trunk. Oh, I don't use the trunk. Your trunk and yours. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, you look amazing.
interesting today. The glass is all folded up. Get a little hairs, a little money down the side. What do you got? A trunk latch in this thing? How do you like them lights? Oh, I only got one on the go, but yes, sir, pretty nice. You're not my father. <laughs> it used to go quick, but ever since I welded the floor in, it doesn't go quick anymore. That looks good. That looks real good. I pressure washed wow. underneath the car. That looks good. And of course, water leaked in the odd spot, but it's amazing. Like that stuff, does it ever rust easy like that plate steel? Yeah. Like, oh, no, I'll tell you. You did some work but there. But it's all start. welded in. That looks and good. I pressure washed the car yesterday. I laid on my back with that wand. And it took like an hour, but it's all it's all pressure washed underneath. Now that didn't take any of the rust off. Well, it is just to knock off loose stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, you been drinking today? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The cord tripped me up. Yeah. The cord so, turned so me up on the bumper, and then I I forgot my feet had no footing. So you haven't been drinking today. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Some wild uh, looking springs. I pressure washed everything and all angles up and around the quarter panels up inside. And, um, so got an what, awful pile of dirt down. What are you going to do for? Are you going to black the rock guard or something? Uh, or? Rock guard's not heavy enough for me. Rock guard is perfectly good when you have um, basically new metal, no rust, and you're putting a coat on it, and especially when you're not leaving, not out in the weather any. But rock guard, rock guard dries out, and once it dries out, if you put it on your everyday car and you put it on surface rust that's underneath the car, and you drive it, um, in six months' time, it's off. It, it won't last. It won't last the weather. It's not strong enough. That looks good. But it's good on new metal. And see, everything that you're working on, it's either sandblasted or it's new metal. Plus, you're not out in the weather driving. But if you were, rock guard isn't heavy enough. You need something more like... What um, are you going to do with it? Uh, I haven't done it yet. I don't know. Tire and thinner. Yeah, something like that. And spray it on the Schultz gun. Yeah. Might be your... Or what did I say? Tire, pitch, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You know, because that thick undercoating that they put on all the cars. Yeah. But they don't do it complete. You know, but wherever they spray it, it's on there like quarter of an inch thick and just go melts on. So you layers. should be allowed to do it. They can do it. Well, that <laughs> that stays on because it's so heavy duty. But now Rock Guard would work if you could put, say, three or four coats. But it, the base dries and then it chips off if there's rust. Because it, it, matter of fact, rust, rust, uh, you can't beat it. I don't want to talk about rust. Technically, the best surface you can have is rust. Holds on better, doesn't it? it yeah. Hold on uh, nothing will affect it. You don't <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I do. It's, it's already there. Yeah. Well, it's and it's foolproof. You know. But the thing is, it, you know, hey, we you know what. Good job on that. You know what happens? It, it just gets worse and worse until there's nothing left. It's hard to believe that you weld that up in there with the torch. It really um, is. Like I, I find that you must be. That no was wonder the, your arms are sore. Uh, that was the easy part. Up, up in, in there? The wheel well was the hard part. Up in there, in the wheel well. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it's, like it's, from underneath, though. Oh, I'm telling you, it's hard to believe that. Although it was hard back in behind the back seat. That's what I'm saying. Because I welded it completely. But the hard, that that wasn't, that was hard enough. But the hard part was laying here, welding up in here. It's hard to believe that you did it. You know, the wheel well up in there. I know, I know, because I wouldn't want to do it. Even with, the, with the big welder, Ooh. and you're doing with the torch um, at arm's reach. At, well, that's the only reach you got, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you hang on to this down here, and arm's reach, and the rod is this long, and you're looking at the bottom of your glasses, and you're at maximum viewpoint where you can hardly see the pedal because it's so far away. I'm gonna have to give you give me a give me a lesson. Because I, I don't I don't well with that and I don't use the heat that much so I should give, yeah. me, give me a lesson on it. Let's give, um, let's, let's give me a lowdown on your Ferrari now, if you don't mind. Um, if you don't mind. 
Yeah, uh, right now I'm welding. Just a sec. Yep. Uh, right now I'm welding in these uh, corners right in here. Um, I'm gonna bring the light. Yeah. If you don't mind. So okay. you're you're still welding. Well, I gave it. I gave up, but I got some of it done. I gave up. Oh well. I'm uh, finishing here. You can put your finger right down through into the sill. Um, technically, it's not a big deal because the sill is the bottom of the floor, yeah. sort of like. Um, but uh, I, I'm gonna have to. I'm welding it up anyway. I'm um, telling you, Mister, you, you really but, would have to give you a pat on the back to weld this mm. car with the torch. I'm telling you right now. Don't know any better. <laughs> Holy moly! Like the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. You, you <laughs> might have put it in a handbag. I'm not sure, <laughs> but <laughs> holy moly! Well done. Like but I, I you, know that Jolie's got good camera work but to show the amount of work and the welding and you know, it, whoa, and, and and to have it look as good as it does. I mean, it, I can see past. It, the, the, well, the, not only that, but it's solid. Oh, that's what I'm saying. You know, look, it, yeah, um, I cut it like it, it's solid. Now, the only stuff you got to clean up is the stuff I did. <laughs> well, you should have you when you put your floor in. Yeah. Like I said, that happy thing. Yeah. Know what I mean? Like just as long as you're you're happy doing it, uh, yeah. fine. As soon as that. As soon as it starts becoming a bit of a nuisance to you, mm -hmm. just send it home. Mm -hmm. But anyway, what you did was you you stuck at it after the happy thing, which was putting in your trot your square stock yeah. and laying your floor in. Um, you got your satisfaction. I did. But as soon as you got to the back seat area, where the sheet metal covered up. The rusted oak frame member and the floor was all gone around the edges. You should have just said, "Oh, this doesn't look like fun anymore. I'm going to send this car home and let me deal with it because that's where I had to cut some of your work out to fix that body mount coming out okay. and stuff." When uh, that's when you weren't having fun because because my name was used in vain. Well, no. Um, <laughs> that son. What I mean was you had full satisfaction when you did the floor. But when you got start cutting into the back seat area where you didn't cut it out, yeah. you tried to cover it up on the corners where it was gone. So you cut patches and stuck them in and tacked them and then stuck this one up here, but something was in the way. So that's I had exactly, to stop that's exactly and you what tacked I did. it in when you could have uh, like that. That's not as much fun as cutting out the crap and doing a good job and then putting in new. I left that and to you because I yes. knew you'd have fun well, doing that. Well, what I'm trying to say is as soon as you started cobbling up behind the back seat, you weren't having fun anymore and Probably. you didn't last long and you put them in real quick and got the car out of here when you could have just left it not even done. Oh, no mean because Damn it was, it. you had fun when you were doing the floor. And, and you were getting tired by the time you put the front fenders. And you could, you could be right. But the fun you you enjoyed the floor. But as soon as you got into the cobble of the back seat area, where you weren't actually restoring it because you weren't cutting anything out and fixing it, right. you were kind of patching it in. Right. Well, patching it in is a real drag because you had to pull it back out to fix it. Well. I patch in enough things, and any time you patch in something, it's a it's a drag. It, the only time it's nice is when you can cut out the crap and build a piece and put it up in there, yeah. and then you take great pride in how well it fits. I, did, I didn't think I was going that. The far same as this trunk here and the inner fenders. Um, if I'd said, "Ooh, job for Chad." I can guarantee you, you would not have done it my way. No, I would have. You would just not have that. put pun patch in at a time, cobbled in there, mm -hmm. up and fitted uh, like loose metal on both sides and all, and rubber, and stuck one patch in and see. I didn't do it in one piece, like even though I cobbled it in, I didn't do it in one piece because I wanted the clamps where the supports were, so I could weld it to the supports. So I put it in a small piece with a clamp, and then I welded it to the sports supports, and then welded it to the inner fender, and then I put a little piece in that had no supports behind it, with a bar, 
where I wanted it that. Well, I can tell you one thing. Because if you, you put you, it in one piece, you can't use clamps. You've got her together. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Like, I, I put this in in one piece, and there's no clamps because the body's in the way. Self-tappers. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I put, I fitted it, and then I took the floor out, and then I welded this because I was able to put my C-clamps up through to hold it yeah. here. But, yes. You sure do got to weld it up, man. I'll give you that, buddy. I'm telling you. I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you an A. For but you would have cut everything out and then built your new inner fender. Try to. On okay, both yeah. sides. While every, all of this crap would have been cut totally out, including this probably. And then you would have put your fen inner fender in. Then you would have laid this part in. Then you would have put a divider here. Know what I mean? I'm like not sure. you would have. However, you would have done it. It would not have been pitching, uh, patching up in between the original mm. stuff. You would have ripped it all out and put in your own design. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Because this, it did cause considerable more work. But I don't. I'm not good at replacing panels. Uh, well, you're, I would you're have still. Them up. I still would have been at it. I'd still be doing the inner fenders if I had them cut out and tried to put them back in. But anyway, the this to my surprise still it still closes. Oh, oh yeah, no, it's closed. Beautiful. Yeah, it still fits. It still fits. Beautiful. But anyway, man, I'll tell you, if someone drove by, seen this pair outside, fifteen years ago, twenty years ago, they would never think the same pair. It's still blue and white though. It is? Yeah. Looks good, well done. Like someone asked on the comments, said, how, um, how'd this car get so rusty? <laughs> Stayed outside. It sat on grass since like 1975. Right. right up to 10 years ago when I put it in the garage. Yes. You know, sat out on, sunk in the mud. Uh, and in Nova Scotia, they don't last. Like, if this car sat in the woods, you could have walked right through it, not even seen it. Like, there'd be <laughs> nothing left but the odd piece of what nickel they, sticking out. What they say, you could throw a cat through it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Show us your Ferrari now. Yeah. If you got time. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, I've got all kinds of time. All kinds of time. We looked at a snowmobile the other day. Is, like it, yours. it is exhausting trying to fix miserable. Like, if you miss, if you skip any hard detail, yeah. and you put in an easy patch, then later on when you're starting to refine things, you get caught back up and you have to go back to that little miserable little detail area again. Um, it doesn't make it, it's no easier. Uh, the hard, miserable little detail spots, like in that Oseville in the back seat area, are still hard. Like... No matter how you do it. Uh, or when. Is that the wheel nuts in that bad one? Uh, yeah. Jeez. But anyway, I got a That's I got good. another whole assembly on its way. It should be here this week. But they um someone the the car was smashed twice. Uh, there was evidence that it was repaired before I repaired it. Like from it was yeah, the car was smashed up before. And there was dents in this quarter panel, which I had to refine a little bit. So I think what happened was the back wheel got hit and it broke that. So they bought one from a junkyard, which had brand new bearings in it. And the uh, protect and this nut had yet was tapped over, painted yellow, painted yellow, which meant it was properly put together. And the, um, so anyway, took it apart to put my new bearings in it and the nut wasn't even tight. Um, put in a vise and put the wrench on it and it turned right off but as easy as what I'm taking this off. When, so what happened was they uh she's oh um, that nut holds it on. Yeah. Brand new bearings. Yeah. No, maybe five, six miles, five or six thousand miles on, which I put on, but there's what happened. 
There's no metal in there. Two brand new bearings. So what they did was that's uh, previous. The bearing spun on the shaft, seized up bearing, and it took out all that metal. So that'd what they hard, did... That'd be a hard fix. Not for a machinist. And but, why is that? Because you still have to go up on them teeth. Yeah, and then they cut to... They, oh, they, no problem to cut that back in there? Um, from what I was told, they weld it up, turn it down, and leave the spline and just grind the spline back into here. Okay. So um, they weld it up first there. And then grind the spline back in? Yeah. Yeah. But, um... It seems like it'd be a herd. No, they can cut the spines. Okay. Um, but... This holds the wheel on. Yeah. Yeah. I understand This that. is $1,500 US. Well, what I'm gonna... What I was... Um, no deals. There's what? no second-hand ones, because if there's a second-hand one, it's sold as a unit. What I was going because to say was, it's your car. You do it the way you want to do it. Well, not only that, but if I sell the car, it's still my car. When yeah, it comes they to give this. you the money, it probably won't be. Okay. <laughs> this, that, what I mean is um, you, you would, the wheel falls off. That would be on your they're going 60 miles an hour down the road with RCMP behind them, and the wheel falls off. It's my car. I'm the one in court. If I sell them, no, uh, well, no, not, I, I can't go there. All I know is I don't think there's a machinist in the country that'll touch it. Okay. Well, this holds the wheel on a Ferrari. Yeah. If I took that down Armstrong, do you think he'd weld it up? I'm not sure. But he'd say, oh, that's a hub wheel. Nope, sorry, guy. That's what he's say. All, everybody, all my friends, all kinds of people say, oh, geez, just take that to a machine shop and weld it up and turn it down. I say do what you want to do. They do it on tractors all the time and everything. <laughs> That's not a tractor. Well, yeah. <laughs> and not only that, they do it on, um, you know, like four-wheel drive gearboxes and stuff. But this holds the wheel on. Yeah, we'll do what makes you happy. But the fact is, they put new bit at the junkyard before they sold this as a good unit. But they put brand new bearings in it on a no, on a gone shaft. And they tightened it up. And between the collar... And the collar in here and the shut out like did it mess still, that up? No. Okay. It still it still tightens up. Okay. Um, because it's pinched between the collar and a collar like this this yoke and a collar between the bearings mm. and the housing where it hits. So when they torque that up at 140, I can guarantee you there's no movement. But you drive the car 10,000 miles down the road and all of a sudden there's movement because the wheel went like this. Like it on the bench as a used part, it was it got top dollar because there was no play and they put brand new bearings in it. They even probably advertised they put brand new bearings in it. And there's brand new bearings in it. But the shaft is gone. They said new brand new bearings, not to put the shaft. <laughs> well, that's a case of uh, a previous bearing seized yep. up and took out the shaft. But this part is unattainable used. So you're getting that soon. I'm right? buying. It should be here this week. Okay. The whole unit, like uh, used. So. Well, I, I can tell you one thing: the roads haven't got any better. No, I'm in no rush to. <laughs> I'm pretty careful when I do get it on the road. I'll be pretty careful where I go. Because I don't like, don't like any commotion. And I don't like potholes. And he doesn't like people tailgating them. If you're going to tailgate them, pass them. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was a time when no one no tailgated me. There you go, Yeah. We, we, did a, we went and bought a cover the other day, and it was a snowmobile, just like yours there, but it was a single cylinder. Mm -hmm. He wanted 17 for it. He said he'd sell it for 15. What, what is this worth, Jimbo? Um, What's a single cylinder worth? This 69? No, 70? 67. 67. Uh, the rundown on the years is 67, 68 has, little ra has a round headlight. Okay. 69 and 70 has rectangular headlight. Okay. They're wider. Yeah. That's, that's the identification difference. Uh, simply is the headlight. Like the, this part's different too, but this being this is 67 68, looks like that. This one's a twin too, so you get a little more gump. Uh, this 18 and a half horsepower twin, is it not? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
The one we looked at was a single. Yeah. It looked to be in pretty good shape, though. The hood looked to be in good shape. Yes. Not, yes. not as good as this one, I don't think. Um, you've got the original seat on your the original uh, seat. In, bre in decent shape, that single would be worth 1700 This one's not not for sale. Um, the only, it's the only one that I, I got left. I had like 30. I had... <laughs> Thirty many of them, but um, um, it had the right skis on it and stuff. Uh, yeah, he was a pretty good cat too. He delivered that cupboard to us for twenty bucks, all the way. To and the, the sixty-nine and seventy skis don't have this cutout in them. They're they go they go a half a general curve here. Wow, you know what you're doing. Um, they like this yep. cutout is older. Um, if that just kind of curves go. round, yeah. that would be 69, 70. Okay. Wait, then in 70, 69? Yeah, I think so. Then in 71, they were, they turned, um, well, they're still yellow, but they took a the plate yeah. and they had a bar, a round bar with a handle. Okay. From I, was, 70, I, was, yeah. I was thinking about it. I mean, I kind of like, I like yeah. the, I used to have these when I was younger, but, you know. There's a picture um, of it. Oh, there's a picture of it there. Yep. Yeah. They're going up. It's got price. your ski. It's got the same skis you're going to go. Um, they shouldn't. Well, then. They should have. They should have oh. rounded out. See this? Um, yes, it's got a uh, same skis. Oh, yours. that no, that's not a '69. That's a '68. Is it? That. Okay. That's yeah. That's definitely worth that money. The '68s. 67s, the, they made, um, okay, don't quote me on how many they made, but this is put this way. They might have made 1,000 67s. They made 10,000 68s. They made 3 million 69s. Okay. And they made 10 million 70s. Same headlight, too. Circular. Yeah, that's a, seven, that's a 68. That's the same as this. It's good. To, okay, it's good. Yeah, that... You want you want to buy that? <laughs> oh, don't say that. Yeah, no. um, it's rare. Yeah, they're rare. Um, I don't know how many they made, but I'm just saying in '69 and '70. They're a little different here too, aren't they? It's sharper uh, here. Yeah, they go to a point when yeah. the '69s and '70s have a bulge here, yeah. and they have a rectangle square headlight. But um. Does it have this too? Is this go your this is your gas tank, right? Uh, yeah, they, that's the same. Does it different, have that? It's a different cap, but it's identical. Yeah. But huh? same. The same. thing is, is um, it's it's like so, um, right? a 1940 Chev truck. How how many did they make compared to 1950 Chev trucks? Okay. Um, that's like 67 and 68 Skidoo's. They made, they were just coming on. They were just starting to sell them across the country. And in 69, and 68, a lot of dealers popped up. And then in 69, everybody had a 69 and 70 Skidoo. So, but nobody have, had 68s. Do you, do you have any parts at all for these? No. No, I sold them all when I sold my machines. And what I had left, I sold to another guy. No, I um, had... Nothing. <laughs> I still have a few parts over at Mums, but no. Um, but the '68s, they're in. In when I was collecting, most of the ones I collected were '69s and '70s because that's what you can get. That's all the country. Like I bought everyone I could find, and ninety percent of them were '68, '69s and '70s. The '67s, '68s are are considerably rare. Like one to a hundred, rare. Okay. I don't know, baby. But that, these canoes. Jim talk is into a canoe. <laughs> but um, that one, is, that would be a good, good one to have. The sixty nines, as I said, they made a lot of them. They're sixty nine three hundred singles, like the three hundred twelve. Yeah. Um, there was like a billion of those. Okay. There you go. We just got a lesson on ski dudes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I um hope to get that back together soon. Um, 
I want to see that thing of doors, but I want to see um, that Me thing. too. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with uh, the spray underneath. Like, I know when everything is new, rock guard is all you need. But when you're spraying it on rust underneath. What about that plastic um, cement with thinner? It, I want something on there a little thicker. Yeah, but, well, yeah. tire with thinner. And thin it yeah. down, put it in a rock guard gun, like a Schultz gun. That's what Rick's always done down there for undercoating, and we've seen it work fantastic. And it goes on quite thick. Whatever thick you want to put it on. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can make it thick, thin. And it's cheaper than than do it with rock guard, because rock guard's like $20 canned. Yeah. And, and to you, do that car 20 thick cans. enough, I need 20 or 30 cans. Or more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, that's like a thousand dollars just for rock guard. That's where I learned it. That's how I do it if I was you. Mm -hmm. It'd give a nice black look. Make it look really you should be surprised how nice that car would look with the black that kind of coat that's underneath it. Yeah. It looked fantastic. Yeah. And I I washed everything. I didn't worry I washed underneath the front when I put the motor in. I had it jacked up. No, I washed everything before I put the motor in in the front. But uh, that's why I didn't bother too much this time. I just, I had to get some of the looseness off. Which one's next, the Studebaker? Um, no, I can't work that one far ahead. <laughs> um, I, I can't get caught up with today's activity instead of worrying about tomorrow's. No, um, this, I'd like, I want to put something like rock guard and what? Plastic cement, thin, like tar, like you, like yeah, okay. on the roof, yeah. and you can bite and, uh, in the gallon cans and mix it with thinner. Like reducer. Yeah, reducer and thinner. Just pour some in and mix it up. You know, get you can get it like milkshake or you can get it like Yeah. Whatever it all depends what you want probably to mix. Could even use Varsol. Perfect. Probably that's probably what would be best, probably. Well probably go best with is like a limit. Twelve dollars a gallon. Well, it never dries it, does it? Yeah, it'll dry. Yeah. Well, there you it'll go. Dry. Use Varisol. Yeah. Same as tar, it yeah. will dry. Varisol would be the best thing. Yeah. Because, yeah. And just you can make as thick as a milkshake. Reducers like $75. Yeah, well, but what am I talking about? Use, yeah. use um, yeah. Varisol and, and gasoline's even cheaper. I was saying it'd be dangerously smelly. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. And then you put it on as thick as you want. You probably would want some something you cover your hair and your face um, and something like that maybe when you go to do it. One of a zook suit, like a, a total. Suit. Yeah, maybe a bee, uh, a bee suit or whatever. Yeah, know. well that's a zook suit. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's snowmobile, you want that snowmobile. Um, oh, that's no. a good snowmobile. And if it, it was a 69. Uh, it runs too. Yeah, if it was a 69 300 twin uh, or 300 single 12 horsepower, I'd say no, because they're made a million of them or more. But it is rare. Being a 68, it is rare. Jimbo's spending your money, baby. Yeah. Jimbo's spending your money. It's not as good a shape as yours, but I mean, you've gone over yours. Um, Have you not? Well, this one, it's painted it and it's got a new track and a good motor and the seat and stuff and running and cleaned up. But the chrome's not that good. I noticed the chrome on that one was quite rusty. Yeah. Nothing that's West Pay wouldn't help or fix. You know, it'd be uh, well, bit. or send it away and head. Or actually, the chrome sticker. The chrome sticker will stick on that. Yeah, probably no doubt. It's nice to come up in your garage and not, not see your own breath. Not. <laughs> <laughs> for me, for me, it's nice to smoke your and not see your own breath. You know what I mean? Look at this now, would you? Uh, I'm getting down. That was that was packed like that right up to here. Oh wow! And that's how many I took. How many I used on the wheel wells? Wow! So I gave you a little. I gave you a small handful. But the buddy that gave me these, and then somebody else dropped in the next day and gave me some more. But that whole thing was still right up to here. And that's how many I used uh, through that trunk. Jeez, there you go. But, um, like, uh, people say the, oh, my Lord, the welding gas, that's pretty expensive. 
and yeah. they're eager to spend some money to fix but, something. Yes, it is. Uh, it's $150 for the small tank and $50 for the oxygen. So $150 for that small tank and um, you can weld uh, about this about this many because I just put a new tank on so about you can weld probably 200 welding welding rods with a small tank and then gas and that's for $150 and it takes two ox two acetylene tanks down to, for the oxygen to go down so the oxygen lasts a lot longer so every two tanks of, of acetylene then I need oxygen. Can you use propane? Um, a lot of the spots on this are 18 or 16 gauge metal original like the old yeah. thick thick heavy duty metal and it's in a flange with another piece so it's spot welded two pieces of metal together so that makes Are you it, serious metal over top of metal? Well wherever I'm welding <laughs> On a lot of spots, I'm welding to the original spot where here where the metal was spot welded together, then it came out, it rusted off, so it's cut off, and I'm welding to that flange. So you and got two pieces of That's metal. almost eighth of an inch thick. Yeah. Well, propane would never heat that. But propane will heat 18 or 20 gauge sheet metal. Beautiful. But anywhere where it's real thick. What, what's a tank of that cost? 30 oh, bucks? Um, 30 bucks? maybe okay. but the acetylene what I'm trying to say is I went through six hundred dollars worth of gas to weld this car up. but there's so a lot of welding there man and I was all winter I started here and I went all the way around and I went through four tanks four tanks of the small four ox four acetylene and two oxygen you had so much fun doing that. Now, here's the here is where um, it costs money. Take that to a body shop and then weld it up. And they'll use the make router and do what you did. They'll spot weld the patch in. But anywhere it's where there's body fill, we know it has to be continuous. So they spot weld it continuous, but it's not really continuous. It's got little tiny holes almost between every other spot weld because they don't really care. <laughs> and um, all they care is it gets smoothed up and body filled and painted and it looks great and they get paid and that car is out of the yard. So two months, two, two years later, you've got bubbles coming out because the pinholes in the weld are coming out because you're out in the weather. Yeah. You know, well, what I'm saying is when you, uh, you have someone do some of your work and you pay $80, $90 an hour, that is money. You got that right. It don't take no, four tank or six tanks of gas or four tanks of acetylene to weld up that car. That's not money. Because it took me six months to use up that much gas. And look at the work I done, did. That's a twenty thousand dollar job. The amount of work I did on this car. <laughs> yeah. And that car is not even worth twenty thousand dollars. Can I get you another one to do? Uh, no. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> No, I, I don't even want the one I got. <laughs> I just did it because it's in front of me. Oh, well deserved it. You had it for that many years, man. Yeah. You had fun doing it. Yeah, but uh, no, not past that. Uh, I don't want another one. And I'm still nowhere near on the road. I got electrical problems and interior problems. Galore. Don't let that slow you down. Yeah. You got two brand new plates to put on that thing and yeah. it finishes it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But um, we'll come back and have them welded in the floor <laughs> for metal. Okay, like, okay, I get the my mm -hmm. undercoating sprayed on underneath so that I, the wheels go back on and it's back on the ground. And then I take it to a shop to have some of the wires uh, hooked back up, yeah. the fuse box fixed, and get things on the dash working. How much do you think that would cost? Oh, you'd, you'd probably be better off to put a new wiring harness in it. Okay, how much do you think that would cost? Take them a week. A well, week at five that what a uh, um sixty dollars, seventy dollars an hour? No, we might as well say a hundred. I don't think there's a shop in the country that's sixty dollars an hour anymore. Well I'm not sure. You're probably right. Probably yeah. And not only that, but it'd take them six weeks 
it'd take them six months to do six one week's worth of work. There is a few because people. they'd have other jobs they'd have to be doing. The car would just have to sit up in the yard waiting, and they'd pour it in at spot times because nothing else. Like it, it's almost impossible. Is what to have someone else do your work. Unless it's necessary, in and out. In and out. But in and out. Electrical problem that's not is not in, in and out. That's not in and out. Electrical problem on an old car is like, um, uh, it's calm as a house fly, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's a bottom, bottomless pit that way. Yeah. Like, I can tinker away, and eventually I will have everything working, but. It won't be on the road this summer if, I, if it's up to me to get the blinkers working. Know what I mean? And no, okay, here we go. We got a column, and when you move the blinker switch, it goes crunch, crunch, crunch. You, you can feel the rust in there, and that's why the blinkers don't work. Well, I can't even get the steering wheel on. <laughs> well, you're gonna have to hook up a, a just a, a yeah, aftermarket. and that looks pretty cobbly, you know, where it does have a blinker switch, but. What I'm saying, what I'm just really trying to say is, um, the, let the games begin, and we call it misery. <laughs> know what I mean? Like to make it legal and everything working, there's a lot of but there's a lot of buttons and knobs on that dash, well, and they I all guarantee you, none of them work. Just just the lights, none, just not the lights. lights, just the lights. Yeah, you know, nothing else has to work. Just the lights. <laughs> yeah. The wipers you can do it by hand. <laughs> yeah, crank it back and forth. Right. No, it's going good. Looks good. Well, it looks awesome, actually. You get it undercoat it. They look awesome. I want to see it outside. I think everybody does. I know. You kind of had it inside well, it for a while, right? It's all washed now. I, I And I'm just finishing up a little bit of welding around the edge of the back And remember, there. when you move any of the cars, we want a phone call. Because we, yeah. we don't want we want to see no bumper action going on. But we yeah. want to see well, I got how, it, on how now, it's done. So. We do, yeah, we do so. What time is it, sweetheart? Do you know? Um, My, um, this thing went on the blink. Oh, no. Um, it still, still works, but I have no way of knowing if it works unless I go like this and turn it off. Okay. I think it's still working. I lost the screen. Um, it, I still phone numbers mm -hmm. and it still rings, but I can't answer texts and it doesn't work as a, as a, yep, yeah, it's, do you want to put it, this it was sim? turned off, but we it's can, on now. We can put the SIM in your new phone. Yeah. Yeah. And that way you don't miss any. That means I can, like this was kind of handy because it fits in my pocket. Okay. Just turned off. Um, battery's low. This one, it won't, the battery won't stay up. And I lost the screen the other day, so you have to put the other one. You, you can get a thing for the belt for the other one, can't you? Or yep. Something well, they're big. I like I like I I like this because it fits in your hand or it fits in your pocket like it's supposed to. Yeah. You know, the great big iPhones they don't fit in your pocket like they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like you have to carry them, or like how do you do that? No, I, you, I don't you, know. You don't carry one. I don't have phones, so. Like you could carry that in your pocket easy enough, but those iPhones, they're, they're yeah. What do I got in my pocket? I've got, uh, oh, uh, no, I have myself. I got, I got a, <laughs> a wheel cat. Oh, yeah, no, okay. A Schroeder valve cat. No, it, the car, it, it's good. It, um, it's not a negative thing that I'm not done. Know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's work in progress. Um, oh, it looks good. I want like, to get inside and see what it looks like. I know what it's going to look like, but I'm just like seeing it. After, the paint after on it. like once, as I said, when I start putting in the interior, it's going to have to be kind of rough and quick, and it's hard to do interior rough and quick. You either do anywhere near decent job or don't do it at you all. You can get that diamond tuck. You ever see that before? The diamond tuck. You yeah, but you still got to cut the cardboard and fit it in the clips around the edge or screws. You well, know, like I seen that. I seen uh, the guy on TV put a piece of plastic, take a couple magnets, put see-through plastic on his door, and then he cut it to shape, and then he put all the holes in it, and you transfer that to your board, and then you just cover it. You know what I mean? Okay. To yeah. make a door skin, 
Yeah. You just took a piece of plastic, like clear plastic, like, you know, probably, I don't know what gauge it would be, but it had a little thickness to it. You put the magnets to it, and you can see everything. And then you draw it out what you want, and you draw the holes, and you draw where the door handle is, and you draw where everything is. You cut it all out, and then you lay it onto a piece of board, okay, yeah. and transfer it, and then just cover it. Yeah. And everything's pretty quick. Yeah. Instead of trying to guess, and yeah, you could have clips in it, you could do whatever you want. Well, I'm you're far from that, but well, I'm not sure if you're far from it, but diamond tuck don't look bad for a 50s car, I don't think. That's just my opinion, it's my belly button. Look at that. Where'd you get them plates, Jimbo? 1957. What a beautiful day, is it? Yep. The reason I'm doing that because I smell something funny. Yeah, there's raccoons around this place. <laughs> you've got some. And you've got some renters, have possums you? Possums or groundhogs or something over there. Um, they got to live somewhere. Yeah, they're coming in a hole in the top of the roof, at the very peak where the chimney used to go out through. A couple yeah. shingles blew off, so there was a hole there, and they got a family upstairs in the attic. Um, so at sundown every night, I scoop up my cat and put him in the house and he's not very happy with that because he sleeps all day and he's out uh, protecting the yard is what he does. He sits here and stands guard and fights with the raccoons and protects the yard <laughs> and I put him in the house and the raccoons... Did he get beat up a little bit? Um, he's scar little scars on the end of his ears. Oh, okay. Just enough to tell me um, that... You know, Somebody's around? But see, if he... He gets, he likes the territory all the way around the house. That's his house. Yes, so when he confronts the mother pin, yeah. we'll call it, coming down off the roof out front, she's going to protect her baby. She might not just stop at tearing his ears a little bit. <laughs> and I really don't want her here or the babies, and I don't want my cat to be hurt. You're, you're going to need a trap then. Um, Mum said uh, they've already been up there two weeks. Yeah. It takes five weeks for the youngs to leave the nest. So it's already been two, so i got three weeks to go before the young ones are on the way. <laughs> and then maybe they'll get out of here because it'll be too dangerous because my cat will <laughs> That makes me laugh. You've got three more weeks before they're yeah. out. Uh, either that or hire trappers to come and yeah. pull them out of the, out of the attic. Alrighty. Oh, look at the stripes on the clouds. On the what? On the clouds. Look at that. Look at the mackerel. All right, Jimbo, we're out of here. Okay. We're going home. Sorry for waking you up, but it's a beautiful uh, day. No, I'm not, no, that's good. What you gonna do now? Nothing. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I'm working away. Like I. I, I welded a little bit this morning, uh, the, one of the gas tank straps behind the back bumper was rusted from one spot, so yeah. I reached up in a real hard spot and I finished welding Have you got a gas tank yet? No. When you're over next time, there's one in the junk gear pile there that might, might do you. It's a thin one. Like that thin mm -hmm. one. Huh. Mike, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. Brand new though. You can weld the spout on anywhere you want to, could you not? Yeah. Oh, good. It's yours if, you, sound... if, if you need it. Yeah. I haven't got down your guys' way yet. I, I was there one day, you guys weren't there. Yeah. We were on the way to the city. Yeah. See ya. Have a good one. Okay.